All right, this is radical. It's never been tried before, but I think it can help save some money. Well, right. Before you go any farther, I agree with you, Rob. I agree with you. Yes, oh, perfect love, idea, great idea. Love your attitude. <laughs> okay. Stop putting turn signals in cars. Nobody pays attention to them anyway. Nobody uses them. <laughs> I, I drive down the road, people hit their brakes and make a turn, no signal whatsoever, and that's more common yeah. now than anyone signaling. Yeah. So why spend the money putting turn signals on cars? That's got to amount to, what, several hundred dollars? Probably multiple thousands of multiple dollars. Multiple thousand dollars, When yeah. you think about all the circuitry and whatever. Yeah, and look what you've done to our uh, society. Uh, you've made cars affordable to everybody now. Yes. <laughs> that simple thing. <laughs> Get rid of the turn signals. Do it today. No more new cars manufactured with turn signals in them. The public stopped using them years ago. Okay. Next bright idea. Next big idea from you, Rob. I'll come up with that tomorrow. <laughs> My next bright idea is to welcome in our next guest. I'm going to call him Shane Shadows. Oh, yeah, baby. Shane, good morning to you, man. Pull your mic a little closer to you because you're too far away to talk. Already. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Bill. Thanks for having me on here this morning. Shane Humberger from Workforce West Virginia. Yes, uh, Region 7 Workforce Development Board, to be more specific. That's what mm -hmm. they told me last time when I was here. I didn't, because uh, Workforce and Workforce Development Board are slightly different things. Workforce, of course, uh, handles a lot of the unemployment and so forth. What we do is help prepare people for jobs and careers so they can uh, better their overall um, life uh, at home financially. Uh, anybody who's unemployed or underemployed, um, based by the standard, say someone who uh, is receiving uh, food stamps or unemployment is going to automatically qualify for our programs where we do on-the-job training with a variety of different employers. We have uh, over 65 to 75, I believe was the last time I looked at the list, of different employers who take on on-the-job uh, positions and so forth. And we help those businesses uh, uh, recover some of their costs from training and uh, payrolling those employees. But in addition to that, I also, uh, I do job fairs. And you have one coming up. Have one coming up next Thursday, April the 20th at the uh, Berkeley uh, County Rec Center, 273 Woodbury Avenue. I think everybody here local knows where it is. If not, I gave the address. Um, Going to be a great time. Um, so give, tell me about a job fair. So when I was in college or getting ready to graduate, we would go to job fairs where there's 500 people there and they've got reasons why you should have pulled in an application and work for them well we we have uh, over 100 employers slated to appear and we also get a lot of walkthrough traffic the idea that the chamber of commerce sends out an email blast and we get a lot of support from all the different local agencies um, and people come in with their resumes and you know obviously you want to dress for the job that you uh that you want but there's a lot of different employers we've got a very wide variety i might throw some of the names out here in a few minutes please do i brought I brought a pretty significant list uh, all the way up from HVAC people to restaurants to, you know, and we get a lot of nonprofit uh, appearances as well. Um, they like to be able to, to speak about their, their various different programs and so on. So we get a lot of appearances of that. Are they looking for volunteers or paid employees? Both, both. And, you know, it, it benefit it, it. Even if you're not, and I explain this to a lot of the businesses involved, even if you're not looking to hire right now, it's good networking. If, especially if you're a nonprofit, it's good for you to be able to get out here and say, "Hey, this is what we do." I mean, this is like the, uh, you know, the Church of the Nazarene for handball. You know, whatever cause that they're trying to do. And is there really a Church of the Nazarene for handball? No, but because uh, <laughs> you came up with it pretty easily. <laughs> well, it's it, it's it's kind of a gift and, and a curse at the same time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's what we do at the job fairs. It, it, there are several hours long. We're going to start at 11 a.m. and we're going to wrap it up by 3 p.m. And there's going to be a lot of different places and a lot of different businesses. A lot of them do right on-site, um, on-site interviews. So I mean, if you're really looking for a job in this area, the tri-state area, because we got a lot of representation from Winchester, Virginia, Northern Virginia, uh, Hagerstown, and Williamsport. Are these are these technical jobs? Are they no. blue-collar jobs, white-collar jobs? They're everything. What, what here, is I'm, I'm going to throw you a couple of names off the list here just because yeah. I brought them. Sure. Um, let's see here. Um, Eastern Regional Jail. Uh, we know they're looking. Nes Nescor, um, uh, which is a educational uh, grants that uh, work out of our offices being represented as well. The United States Postal Service, Millwright Local 443, Cape and Springs and Farm, um, 
Are, you, are these temp jobs or these no, permanent, these permanent are, jobs? No, these are, these are permanent jobs. That, yeah. Uh, Senator Manchin will be making an appearance or someone from his office as well as Congressman Mooney uh, will have representation on hand as well. Uh, the absolute HVAC guys in Winchester um, uh, workforce, uh, the offices of the workforce, Berkeley County Schools, um, Jersey Mike's, who is uh, uh, stepping up with us here, Hospice of the Panhandle, uh, Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. I'm sorry, I kind of stumbled through that one. Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. Uh, uh, CNB Bank, McDonald's, uh, Eastern Panhandle Empowerment, Omega Health Services, the Ark of Washington County. We just, we, um, Country Roads Tire and Auto, I believe they're one of your sponsors. I heard them this morning. I, I got them down here on the list. Pizza Hut, Orgel, Goodwill, Dot Foods, JLG, Homewood Retire. It's it's a, a smorgies board, so to speak, of, of different employers, and they're looking for different positions, full-time positions, not temps mm -hmm. so it's a great opportunity to meet a lot of different people in one room are these folks providing a pay range as well when they usually they do yeah. i mean that's i mean that's that's on the individual business i mean when they're sitting down and speaking to someone that's that's on them but they do on-site interviews we have uh um we have our our specialist our uh, resume specialist my director peter christensen um he's always on hand to help somebody trying to and we got the kiosk we had a great office staff worth of people over here you know from uh, michelle and uh, and sonia and lavisa and we all all on hand helping out trying to help people through the kiosk process trying to show them around the room lead them in the right directions and i just think that's just what a lot of people need more than anything else they just need to be helped i think sometimes it's difficult to look for a job i think there's a certain shyness that people have in the last couple of years it's just just an opinion but i guess covid kind of separated people and it's caused mm -hmm. like a spread of people and they're afraid to be around people and they don't want to talk and they're afraid to come out in public come on out it's you know there's great opportunities await you the job Gene. fair one second bill i promote the job fair is thursday april 20 that is a week from tomorrow from 11 until 3 at the berkeley 2000 rec center on woodbury avenue lots of uh Folks will be there, over 100 people looking to hire. Uh, uh, yes, over 100 businesses will be represented. I tried to get people, like I try to, um, I think of it in a lot of ways like one of those home shows. Sure. Where it's like, you know, if you got something that you can bring out front, if you have a business that, that helps display and represent what you are, a great table, a nice spread of things, bring it. Bring it because it only be makes the presentation that much better. Bring your tablecloth. Bring your stuff. Bring people like to give away stuff. Everyone likes free stuff. I got two free hats yesterday at a job fair in Moorfield. You don't even need hats. I don't even need them. I still have all my hair. Yeah, now, I, I need hats. Well, not so much. You're doing all right. But. I'm hanging on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, aren't Just we all? The last, the last grip of that rope, buddy. Yeah. There's a big knot there and yeah. <laughs> clinging to it. Uh, Shane, you talk to these uh, to a lot of companies. Uh, do you get the sense that there's a shift in the way that people approach a company? Uh, you have the traditional job fair face-to-face, -face, but are folks using the Internet more than they were before? Far more. And is it as effective, you think? Not? I don't think so at okay. all. I think it helps you shop more widely, but it – I don't know. I think there's just something about being face-to-face. I mean, if someone just sends me a resume and says, hey, I got this or that, or contacts me on what, indeed.com or getmeajob.org or whatever, I mean, you might have some of the, the best material. But if, if I'm doing the hiring, I want to see you. I want to see how you present yourself. How are you, especially if you're working with the public, if I'm hiring you for a job that you're going to be dealing with an office full of 100 people or dealing with the public, I want to know how do you conduct yourself how do you speak and and that's a lot of what we cover at some of the different classes that we do over at our office at region seven workforce development board see guys i'm getting in here right this time <laughs> and that's what we do i mean we teach classes about uh how how to do a resume how to dress for a job how to speak in an interview very important but i, I mean, back to your question i think people hide behind the keyboards too much now and this is Hiring someone's a face-to-face -face business. You got to be comfortable with the guy or the gal that you're hiring. That's what I think, anyway. He's like, you know, I don't. You, you might have the best stuff on paper, but 
it doesn't always translate. And and I, the analogy that I often use, because I'm a, such a huge baseball fan, is Ted Williams is what is the greatest of all time in my opinion. But he wasn't much of a manager. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you got to know you got to know your people, and you got to know what you're, who you're working with, and 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 how to deal with them. And I realize that uh, the the interview and the hiring process is multi-dimensional a lot of things come into play sure but when you have the training uh do you emphasize one thing to the students and what would that one thing be what you you mean as far as our classes about? yes uh, yes exactly. well uh, again re- resume resume is important and and how you dress and how you speak i mean there's a lot of i think you know, this is this editorial time we've lost a lot of the formality in this society I mean, and you can find it from almost from the word go. You can pull up to any drive through now to try to get a sandwich, and instead of hearing, welcome to such and such, now you get, how can I help you? What do you want? <laughs> yeah. What can I get you? You know, where's the formality? Sometimes it, you have to deal a certain amount in formality, I believe, I believe, especially when you initially meet someone. What's wrong with, hi, how are you? Bill, it's good to see mm-hmm. you. Hi, I'm Shane yeah. Heimberger, yeah. Region 7 Workforce Development Board. And what... We, we become more comfortable beyond that point. But we've lost somewhere. We've, we've quit teaching our children how important it is just to be polite and somewhat formal, especially with people older or in authority positions. So I think that's a, a big part of, of what we try to make sure. Like, if you want the job, don't show up, you know, dressed in your in your Def Leppard t-shirt and your hat on backwards if you're trying to get a job as an accountant say because I mean you're 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 putting off the the wrong type of vibe I mean dress for the job that you want now that doesn't mean we can't help you find a job and and train you if you're something you're interested in wearing that Def Leppard shirt Def Leppard Brody for instance yeah for example yeah I mean anyone can lay wire but um yeah um I lost my train of thought there Rob uh Rob, Rob Trump, me. Def Leppard will do Def that. Def Leppard did. did well, that, it's a hysteria. <laughs> it is. Um, but yes, uh, how to dress, how to talk, and how to present yourself in a way to get the job that you're looking for. And how receptive are people to receive that? Let me quick uh, quick example. Uh, when I finished graduate school, uh, the uh, a lot of a lot of the folks, my colleagues, went into the oil oil industry. We were all trained as geologists. Probably the best and the brightest of the students uh, refused. That was kind of the hippie days as well. He refused to dress accordingly, and he was going to show. He's sticking by his principles. Everybody got a good job except this guy. <laughs> and the last I heard of him, he is repairing bicycles and yet was a brilliant guy. So my point is, do, uh, do most of your folks you interact with, do they take your advice? Some. Mm-hmm. Some, but I, I think sometimes it's lost on people. And, and I'm sorry to say that because if it's not anything that you were taught, I mean, from the go, I mean, again, it, it I'm not trying to disparage anyone, but if you're not taught to be mannerly, you're not going to become mannerly because Peter Christensen told you to become mannerly for, for a job interview. Um, Peter, uh, plug in my boss again, of course. So, uh, get him in there. Um, Do you want to say the Workforce 7 yeah, board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So listen, Region 7 <laughs> Workforce Development Board. Um, but, yeah, some people, I mean, it seems like it's lost on them because yeah. I think that some people genuinely feel like they're showing up and making their best presentation all the time. And, and 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 that's that's where you know the rubber and the road separate a little bit right there because well what do you mean that's I mean I've I've seen some you know some folks show up dapperly attired and I've also seen some folks show up like they rolled out of bed well, so, so their kids go to school in their pajamas sometimes now so yeah I know there's a and isn't that nice very different formality that's out there and it, it, we're missing it. I think part of that starts with social media, too, because I don't know if you've ever seen anybody who tried to correct somebody's grammar or spelling on social media. Oh, my. They get destroyed yes. <laughs> for trying to correct somebody's <laughs> spelling or grammar on social media. Oh, my Lord. What are you doing? Why are you picking on them? Why are you singling them out? And, yeah. So it's, it's become acceptable to just say, to spell, or put whatever. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, Mediocrity is now the achievement. That's you. Yeah, that's it right there. I'll that's put that on little. T-shirts. I'll bring them back <laughs> next time. Thursday, April 20 is the big day for the job fair. Workforce West Virginia and Region 7 Workforce Development Board are uh, hosting over 100 companies who will be looking to hire people 
And are these folks who are doing the hiring, Shane, looking to hire immediately, or is, is this oh, a collect I mean, your name for down the road? No, I think most of them are looking to, to hire immediately. I mean, there's most of everybody who I've spoken to have a have number one a need for employees and are just almost amazed. Like people don't do this kind of work anymore. It's like uh, one of the hard businesses. It seems like there's a lot of demand for uh, welding and metal fabrication. Yes. But nobody wants to do this kind of work, body shop work. Nobody wants to do this kind of work anymore. That's constantly what I hear when I speak to these um, different um, representatives of these businesses. That no one wants to do this kind of work anymore. Everybody wants to get paid a lot, and nobody wants to do a lot. I mean, I want to, too. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with taking a, a big check and not do much but that's why i host a talk show (laughs) it's why i'm working for region seven workforce (laughs) development board um but it's not realistic uh you have to learn something and this is a great opportunity and we'll help pay for the schooling we'll help Mm -hmm. you as far as we can and separate from the job fair over at our office at 202 viking way we'll help you as far as we can get the job and the education that you're looking for backing off from the full time uh this is uh uh getting ready for summer uh, summer vacation and a lot of students are looking for jobs will some of the folks that you have provide summer jobs for students i'm sure okay. i'm sure i mean i mean especially i would say the, the the restaurant and like some of the manual labor type carpentry spots and construction um, uh, professionals that i have on hand are probably looking for some help because this is their busiest time of the year they're going to be far busier in the next three or four uh, five months down the road than they will be so i mean they're probably okay with that there's a certain transient nature of those type of jobs anyway do you work at all do you work with the schools uh guiding uh guidance counselors at all um well we do work with a lot of the training and technical schools of, of blue ridge for example and james rumsey we do uh, uh programs with them as well for the diff like again we offer so many different types. So we have representatives at those offices that we speak with and, and, and meet with regularly to try to mm-hmm. see what's what's going on, who do you have coming out, what are you looking to do, what programs, what grants can we provide. There's all kinds of different ways to for us to help each other. What type of grants do you provide? Oh, geez, ed- educational uh, primarily. And, uh, again, there's – we can help almost anything that's a hurdle to employment. Um, say, for example, um, you need daycare, or you need uh, uniforms, or you need uh, automotive repairs. Anything that you can, anything that's a hurdle to you going to that job, I can help you with, based on your edu- previous education level and the income level of your home. I mean, I mean somebody who's you know already a you know, internationally financed banker, he's, we're not going to be able to help that guy. But somebody who's a, a, a man or a woman who has four kids and is working 28 hours a week at Arby's, we're going to be able to get you an education, help you along. If you something that you want to do, we can help you with that. Now, you get all your funding from the state. Is that correct? Uh, best of my understanding, yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, again, I, I don't handle all the technical things, but it is money primarily that, that yeah. comes from the state, yeah. yes. Shane, do we have enough people in the Eastern Panhandle who can pass a drug test uh, to fulfill the job openings in this area and with more with more companies set to move in? Do we have enough people to work in all the companies that we presently have and are moving in? I hope. I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, there's a lot of people who aren't working. So, I mean, if anybody who, if they want to mobilize, I would say we could. But I mean, depending on how many employees, I mean, I thought it's kind of an open ended answer here, mm-hmm. or almost a non answer. But I, there's a lot of people who aren't working who could fill the spots, and there would still be spots remaining. Are people still i don't know if you have any way of knowing this or not but the people that you see who are looking for some guidance some skill uh training to be able to get a better paying job are they still receiving unemployment benefits from the the old covid uh, funds that were out there has that run dry Uh, how are people who are not working paying for food and rent a lot of people have visited our offices recently that i've spoken to personally who have said Uh, I'm not working right now. I've been off for X amount of time. And I said, well, have you applied for unemployment? Well, no. Well, first and foremost, apply for unemployment because that 
that basically right there put you in, in the candidacy for me trying to help you get training, on-the-job training, and so forth. But you've got to be able to get benefits from somewhere. I mean, mm -hmm. don't folks, don't, don't hang out there and starve or become homeless off, you, off of your pride. Go and get the help that you need, and we'll try to help you some more. And then maybe one day you won't need it at all. But don't be afraid to make that first step. Take that, take the time, and and apply.